Hello, today is April 11th, 2021, and my name is Miley Lenardi, and I'm interviewing Sarah Holson for the University Library Special Collections and Archives at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, hereafter abbreviated as UCHRGV. This project is partnership with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Please know, Ms. Holson, that the interview will be placed in the University Library Special Collections and Archives at UCHRGV and shared with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. If there's anything you do not wish to answer or talk about, I will honor your wishes. Also, if there's something you wanna talk about, please bring it up and we'll talk about it. The University Library Special Collections and Archives will archive your interview along with any other photographs and other documentations you're willing to share. UTRGV University Library will retain copyright and non-exclusive rights in the interview and any other materials you donate to the special collections archives at UTRGV. Because we are not conducting this interview in person, I need to record your consent to make sure you agree with our interview procedures before we continue. So I'll ask you a series of six questions. Please say, yes, I agree, or no, I do not agree after each question. So question one, do you give University Library Special Collections and Archives at UTRGV consent to archive your interview and your materials at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley University Library. I consent. You grant UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives rights, title, and interest in copyright over the interview and any materials you provide. Yes, I consent. Do you agree to allow UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives to post this interview on the internet where it may be viewed by people around the world? Yes, I consent. Do you grant the University Library Special Collections and Archives consent to share your Zoom interview with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin for inclusion in the Voices of Pandemic Oral History Mini Project, which will include posting the interview on the internet? Yes, I consent. So we use the information from the preview um, from the previous interview to help in our research. So the entire form is kept in secure voices server at the University of Texas at Austin before voices sends it to UCRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives. We have stripped out any contact information for yourself or family members so that that will not be part of the public file. Your public file will only be accessible at UCRGV University Library. Um, the final two questions I ask for your consent on what I just described. Do you wish for us to share the rest of your interview and your public file are available to researchers at University of Texas Rio Grande Valley University Library Special Collections and Archives? Yes. On occasion, you charge be special collections and archives and voices receive requests from journalists who wish to contact our interview subjects. We only deal with legitimate news outlets. You can give consent for us to share your phone numbers or email with the journalists. Yes. Thank you for your consent. Your experiences and stories mean a lot to us at UTRGV Special Collections and Archives. I look forward to what you have to say in the interview questions I will now ask. But before we start those questions, I have a little icebreaker. So please give us a little bit about who Sarah Holson is. I am a teacher at a middle school and have been there for about 12 years done social studies, and now I'm a reading specialist. And there I've also done some coaching and things along those lines. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you for your time and tell you that your experience as a teacher outside of Texas is very important and can shed light on personal experiences with COVID-19. But here at UTRGV, we are dedicated to gather as much information and preserving the knowledge of those who have been on the front line of teaching during COVID-19. All right, let's get started with our question one. Where were you when you first heard of COVID-19? Did you hear about it on the news or the radio or maybe social media? I think first it was just teachers kind of talking about it at work um, and then did some digging online afterwards to kind of get a better understanding, um, but didn't definitely did not have an understanding of it initially. Okay, and what was your first reaction to the information on COVID-19? Um, I, I think I don't know. I didn't know, you know, how serious it was going to be. Was it really going to affect in Illinois? Was it other places like in New York or overseas, things like that? Um, and I've, you know, in my lifetime, obviously I've never 
experienced a pandemic, so I wasn't really expecting one either. And at one point, did you realize this pandemic was a serious life altering event? Or do you not think it is serious? Uh, no, absolutely. It was, it is serious. Um, I think when the school shut down, it became like a real reality check and we pivoted to the online learning and just seeing the whole country kind of start to shut down and watching the news coverage from other places in the world. And even in the country, um, it was really eye opening. So over the last few months, like what, what new sources, um, do you rely on heavily? For your information? Um, I try to get a variety. Um, I'll do a CNN, I'll do BBC to kind of compare um, and just look at different statistics. I've looked at specifically for Illinois, the Illinois um, Health Department, the CDC website. I'm um, trying to get a variety of sources to see, make sure I'm getting accurate information. Um, so you can talk a little bit about like, like your take on like the vaccine that we have now, like what you think of it. Um, yeah, I'm thrilled about it. I personally am vaccinated and I was jumping to go get it. Um, I was able to get in like randomly a couple of friends of mine who are also teachers. We had been like searching websites and trying to find openings and we eventually like by changing our zip codes, we were able to find some. Um, and I think that was really exciting. It was great when my parents were able to get it because they are um, older and so they were the more at risk population already. So I'm thrilled that it's coming out that it's rolling out quicker. Um, and people are getting it. I think almost our entire staff in our district um, got vaccinated as well. Our district set it up with Walgreens and had the two days where they could all go get it for free. And it was great. That's awesome. Um, well, perfect, that's my next question. Do you have any vaccination stories that you wanna share? Anything interesting happen when you're doing that? Um, I think it was, I ended up not doing it through our district, but having our district set it up with a couple other districts around us, um, you kind of saw people coming together and it felt like a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, people were really just kind of excited that it was finally like a reality that it was coming. Mm -hmm. And we were getting it, not just the frontline healthcare workers, like it was, you know, had made its way to our group. Um, and I just think overall, it was just excitement from all the people I'm connected with. Um, do any of your family members hold like the same beliefs as you for COVID-19 or? Uh, most of my family does. My brother is um, less concerned about it in general um, and has not yet gotten it, even though he's had the opportunity to. Okay, um, okay so the next question is I'll, I'm going to talk about how like, you see COVID-19 and like your family members and friends and kind of how they, they view COVID-19. Um, so like, have you or anyone you know contracted COVID-19? Um, yeah, I'll, I know quite a few people who have had it. Um, some have had mild cases. My one friend who I had actually been with and had to quarantine after, um, she was pretty sick and down and out, not hospital sick, but in her house and then had, you know, had to get inhaler and had the breathing troubles and still has some effects now. Um, and I have other people who have had it, didn't even know they had it, but they ended up having the antibodies. And then like my parents' neighbor ended up actually passing away from COVID-19. Um, another one of their friends was like on a ventilator, fortunately was able to come off and is now almost back to normal. So kind of a wide range of experiences. Um, so I know you have family that live outside of Chicago. Um, and like, what's it like for them living outside of Chicago? Like, what is it like in terms of mask being worn, like the leniency or how it is like that? I th So my, my family lives in Wisconsin and it has been a little bit more lenient there. Um, I know I've gone up to, to be with my parents who are very strict and really didn't do much, especially um, before vaccinations. Um, but like going out, not a lot of people wore them. There were still a bit bigger gatherings. Um, I think think in some parts it wasn't taken as seriously. And I know they had trouble getting even a mask mandate passed um, through legislation. So it's been kind of a struggle up there. Um, and you have coworkers and friends that are like have dealt with COVID-19. So I'm assuming that they take it seriously as, as well as you do. Yeah, um, I, I think pretty much everyone that I'm regularly in contact with has taken it very seriously. A lot of us are teachers um, and, you know, we see kids who have parents who work all sorts of different jobs and um, 
you know, some of our friends' parents are hospital workers, so they actually were on the front line seeing mm -hmm. um, some of COVID firsthand. So I think we were all very much taking it seriously. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next set of questions, I'm going to focus more on your stories and like your experiences as like an educator. Um, so just to give some backstory, like how long have you been employed with Northwood or an assistant in general? Um, I've worked for the district for 12 years um, and I've been at the same school the whole time. And how did you end up there? Um, I kind of knew someone who knew someone um, and applied for a teaching assistant job to start. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually when there was an opening, I was able to secure a social studies teaching job. Yeah. Um, so what do you teach and like specific activities that you enjoy doing with your students? Uh, so I'm a reading special, so I'm a tier two interventionist. So I have small groups, never more than probably six kids at a time. Um, so I get to know them really well. Mm -hmm. And we'll do like get to know you games pre COVID. We'd like, you know, have a ball and toss around and do questions, mm -hmm. whether they be academic or personal. Um, we'd shoot hoops, different things like that with COVID, obviously, and sharing materials. We can't do a lot of that stuff anymore. Um, but just getting to know the kids outside of school. Um, and then because I have small groups, I can really get to know them as learners as well. And are you part of any extracurricular activities that you are still doing now? Um, I coach cross country. This year we didn't have it. Um, and then at the high school where the kids filter into Highland Park High School, um, I coach basketball. All right. And so since like the shutdown, when you guys first shut down, you guys moved to Zoom, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay. And so like, how was your experience with like that, like getting to know Zoom and with your students and everything? Um, for me, Zoom was fine to work in terms of uh, the technology. It was really getting the students online consistently, especially in the beginning. Um, we had kind of, we moved to like a really kind of crazy schedule. No one had ever really done <clears throat> instruction online. So there was a lot of confusion. And then we have a lot of students who don't have any parent support at home. So they're just 11 year olds trying to do school on their own. And maybe they slept in that day, or maybe they were taking care of a younger brother or sister. Um, so it was a definitely a struggle in the beginning uh, when we first shut down. Did any of your students not have any access to like internet or anything like that? Uh, yeah, we did have some students, but actually our, as soon as we shut down, we're in a, a, a district in which we have a lot of resources, which is was fantastic for this. I, I feel for those districts who don't have the resources um our office staff called every single family to check if they had internet and if they didn't we got them a hot spot so within probably three days of the shutdown every student at our school had the internet oh, wow, that's awesome. um have any parents come to you with any concerns like regarding their child's learning while on zoom like during these zoom sessions um sometimes at conferences that kind of came up like are they going are they not i'm not home can you tell me you know mm -hmm. um but they haven't necessarily reached out. It was through like um, more of a conference style. Okay. And um, you guys are returning to school already? Or? Yeah, we started this past school year in a hybrid model where they would they had the choice to either go full virtual or a hybrid in which they came every day for two and a half hours and they had certain core classes in person and then their afternoons, um, the other half of their day was their science, social studies, and creative arts classes that were virtual. Um, and then, so we had half the kids each. And actually tomorrow, we're starting back 100% full in person. Wow. Are there any parents who've like opted out from that? Completely? We've had, so we have about 515 kids in the building. Mm -hmm. And I wanna say 30 to 40 are staying fully online and everyone else is coming back. Okay. Um, so prior to going on Zoom and all that, you had a classroom, I'm assuming. Um, what was your classroom setup like? Like, did you have college memorabilia? Did you have any photographs, like personal life in your classroom? Yeah, I had definitely like a bulletin board of old teens or just pictures. I definitely have out my Packers to represent Wisconsin. Um, and then just some other posters and, you know, content based posters as well. And what would you say the importance of those items being in your classroom have on your students? Uh, I think it's just a way for them to kind of get to know who I am. It stirs up 
obviously the Packers and bears or, you know, sports wise, um, it's fun to, you know, connect over that, even though we're on different team, we like different teams. Um, and it's just a good way to kind of get to know kids in a different way or, Hey, that's a basketball. Do you coach basketball? Yeah, I did. And, you know, I can talk about my interests too. So now we're going to go towards our final questions. Um, this will be more of like our general, like what your thoughts are on like Illinois protocols in response to COVID-19. Okay. So what are your thoughts on Illinois protocols? So what are they? Um, actually, I think Illinois in general has done a really um, good job. I know it's kind of been controversial since we they were pretty strict, um, especially as it started and locking things down. And I know that did hurt our economy and small businesses. Um, but I do think it was helpful in terms of, you know, preventing the spread and keeping it as under control as you can. I know Chicago was hit really bad, um, but I think in other areas we were better off because of the restrictions. Um, and I, I think it was well thought out that there were phases and once we reached these numbers based on science and metrics, then we could, you know, loosen it and then restaurants could do this or there was more people allowed. Um, it seemed to have like, it was very systematic Mm -hmm. And it was kind of flexible. If numbers went up, we did this. If they went down, um, and even now that the vaccine's out, they've modified some things as well. So I think they have been kind of adjusting and rolling. It wasn't a perfect system, but I think overall it was, considering they haven't done this before, I think it went fairly well. And do you think that um, local protocol has stuck to the same as Illinois has? Um, Park has been following the same protocols? Um, yeah, I think for the most part, and then I live, um, in Libertyville and I think most like the restaurants have been pretty strict. Um, I think recently things have maybe gotten a little looser as people are vaccinated. People are feeling a little more comfortable, I think. Um, but I think in general, the burbs, um, the suburbs have done a pretty good job. If there was anything you could do differently to combat COVID-19, what would it be? Um, in general for the country, I think a mask mandate would have been helpful um, right away and for everyone to be doing it, not just um, individual states or areas. And I understand um, the value of states' rights, but I just think when it becomes a national health crisis and a pandemic like we were in, I think you've got you've to put some rules in place to protect the people. You know, but it wasn't about me as an individual, it's more about other people. And I think some, it's hard for everyone to understand that it wasn't necessarily about you. I'm 20 years old. I'm fine. You might be, but not your grandparents or whoever else. So. And as a nation, do you think COVID-19 is being taken seriously? It depends on the area and depends on which time you're looking at it. I think certain people are taking it more seriously than others. Um, and certain, I think the, the areas that were hit hard right away, I think they were definitely taking it very seriously. In areas that maybe didn't see it as much that oh, it's not really a big thing because it's not here. Um, so I think it depends where you were and what time period, what part of COVID you were looking at. And do you ever think we'll return back to like a normal lifestyle without masks? Yeah, I think eventually. I don't think we'll be there yet. I think they need to look at, I know next fall, like younger, younger people will be getting vaccines rolling out. Um, but until they have more studies on like kids and things like that, I think it'll be a little bit, um, but it'll be interesting to see if, even if we're feeling sick, like having the flu, if people will wear a mask or not, because I know in other countries, depending on where you're from, if they're not feeling well, they don't want to get others sick. So they wear a mask, mm -hmm. um, which would be really kind of cool if that did happen here too. Yeah. Um, final question. If, um, was one piece of advice you would give to fellow teachers out there who are struggling to motivate their students during these times? I think first and foremost, create a relationship and get to know your students just as people. Um, see if then you can draw them in using um, their interests. And I think if they know that you care um, and you have that relationship with them, they're more likely to come onto their Zoom or work harder or perform for you um, if they feel like they're in a safe, comfortable learning environment. Awesome, okay. And that concludes our interview. So I wanna thank you again for your time um, and for helping me with my research questions and everything for the Voices and All History 